I've often wondered what heaven will be like. Have you? Will I be reunited with my family and my friends who have gone on before? Will I be young again with no more aches and pains? Will the streets really be paved with gold? And will I have a heavenly voice with which to praise God? I have a friend who says that heaven is the ocean city beach and a good book. I've thought about heaven often. Perhaps you have too. Was that what Jesus was talking about when he said this second word on the cross? It's Luke chapter 23, verse 43. Verily I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Luke writes that the two criminals were crucified with Jesus that day, one on the right and one on the left. And Luke calls these two men evildoers. Now Matthew and Mark call them robbers or thieves. This seems to me to be a pretty stiff sentence for merely a thief, when in that day and that age, robbery happened all the time. It was a common occurrence. But then, there was no justice that day. Jesus, who was innocent of all sin, was hanging there between them. Verily, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. But why did Jesus use the word paradise? Why not heaven, or even a better place? Paradise is a Parisian word that means the king's garden. Probably the most beautiful place in the entire kingdom. The word paradise was used only three times in the Bible, whereas heaven was used well over a hundred times. Perhaps Jesus said paradise because the chief priests and the scribes were mocking him saying, if you are the king of kings, save yourself. Or perhaps it was because the soldiers were ridiculing him by placing a sign over his head saying, this is the king of the Jews. Perhaps it was because the crowds had gathered around the cross in, at Golgotha and they shouted obscenities at Jesus, saying, what kind of king is this, hanging there naked and bleeding? Or perhaps it was because the thief, hanging there on the cross next to Jesus, broken, bloody, and dying, with just a few minutes left of life, hurling insults, abuse, and rejection, at Jesus saying, if you are the king of all kings, save yourself and us. Actually, it was the other criminal also hanging there in pain and agony who proclaimed Jesus to be the son of God, truly the king of kings. The disciple had, all the disciples had fled and they certainly did not come to his defense, and even Jesus himself did not defend himself or claim his innocence. They had a choice. The one chose to deny Jesus that he was truly the king. He followed the crowd. He responded to the dictates of society, and he did whatever it took to fit in. Sound familiar? The other chose to acknowledge that Jesus was the king of kings. He chose to put his faith and trust in Jesus the Christ. Remember me, he said, when you enter into your kingdom. And Jesus in agony and pain said to him without any hesitation at all, today you will be with me in paradise in that beautiful garden in my kingdom. If there's any story 
in the Bible that teaches us that our salvation is a gift from God by grace alone, through faith, not by works. This is the story. The words of Jesus on the cross are an example of what Apostle Paul says in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith and not by works. This is the gift of God. Jesus offers this man salvation not because he has earned it or done anything to deserve it. This man literally can do nothing but bleed and die on the cross. And yet Jesus hears the cry of his heart and he promises him an eternity in his garden. Verily, he says, verily, which means I guarantee it, I promise you, you can count on it. This is what the love of God looks like for all of us. This is what mercy and forgiveness looks like for all of us. God doesn't forgive us because we are worthy of it. God doesn't forgive us because we have earned it or because God expects us to work for it with a life of service and sacrifice. Salvation is a gift from God and it comes to us when like this criminal on the cross, we simply reach out to Jesus and ask for mercy. God forgives us when we simply turn to him and say, remember me. If we were there that day at the cross, maybe a passerby or a part of the crowd, a soldier who merely doing his duty, carrying out what he needed to do, or perhaps even a highly regarded member of the church, I wonder how we would have reacted. We too have a choice to go along with the way of the world, to bully our way up the next rung of the ladder, to work begrudgingly like the brother of the prodigal son, or labor all day in the fields like the vineyard workers, or maybe to serve dutifully in the kitchen like Martha, putting off till another time the opportunity to declare that Jesus indeed is the king of our lives. Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. These words assure us that the joy of heaven will be knowing Jesus forever, being with the King of Kings in paradise for eternity. Please pray with me. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. I want to be with you in paradise, and I give thanks to you for making that possible. Help me to reach out and love those who are the least, the last, and the lost among us. May they see your love and life through me. Amen.